Today, we are going to talk about Pulse View and Acceleration Envelope. Pulse View is a method for analyzing high frequency vibration pulses. These pulses are often produced by gears. When gear teeth are damaged, they tend to produce very high frequencies. Small knocks as well. And bearings also generate these pulses when there is damage to the inner outer races or rolling elements. We'll use a signal generator to illustrate what I'm saying. The defects of a gear would appear as knocks occurring at a certain frequency. Suppose we have a gear with 14 teeth that spins at about 20 Hz. Then 20 times 14, 14 teeth, would be 280. Let's adjust the zoom a little bit. Let's adjust the damping frequency. A gear would look something like this. We're also going to add a modulator to simulate that one tooth is good and another one is bad. One good, one bad. This signal is also accompanied by another frequency like the 1x. So we'll put here um, main 1x. And suppose it has an amplitude of about 0.5g. And we modulate this a bit too. We give it a low frequency. We're going to also add a 2x component. So if the 1x had a frequency at 22 Hz, then 2x will have a frequency of 44. Let's set the amplitude to 0.3. So this is normally how gear vibrations are, accompanied by a number of other causes of vibration. And we're going to add one more component that we'll call noise. So let's put here uh, noise with an amplitude of 0.1. And that's it. This is our signal. Let's now connect it to our generator. So we hit record and we'll see the signal as if it were coming from an accelerometer. This is a signal simulator, but in real time, something very similar happens. As you can see here, the signal looks quite normal, similar to imbalance, for example, with some sidebands and uh, very few high frequencies. Notice that we are in velocity and high frequencies are attenuated. So what we are going to do is switch to acceleration and in acceleration we'll see some high frequencies as well as our fundamentals. So how, so how do we analyze these high frequencies? Well, one of the methods is precisely pulse view. Before generating pulse view, I'm going to generate a marker at 1x so I don't lose my fundamental, which in this case would be 1200 CPM or 20 Hz as we configured it. And 280 Hz would be the frequency of the gear teeth passing since 20 times 14 teeth gives us 280. Let's now generate the pulse view. Pulse view uses a bandpass filter that is normally set from 1000 up to the limit of the spectrum. What we will observe in the end is something like this, which are exactly the knocks generated by the passing of each of the teeth. We had designed in our signal that one tooth would generate more vibration than another. Something we can do to understand better is to generate a circular time waveform. We are going to set the frequency at 1200 RPM and here would be the knocks of our gear. We have here 14 teeth and we can overlay several cycles to see over time if the pattern repeats. As you can see, it gives us an image similar to our gear. 
So now let's imagine that this gear, instead of having one bad tooth and one good tooth, let's suppose it is eccentric. The eccentric gear tends to produce more noise when generating more pressure and against the opposite gear and less noise when it moves away. And for that, we are going to modulate it at the same speed as our main frequency. So we are going to record a new signal to see what it looks like this time. This is our new signal. Let's now generate the pulse view again. Okay. Here are our rotation cycles. And then if you notice the noise from the teeth increases once per revolution. Let's see what a circular time waveform of this signal looks like. It also looks eccentric. Here we have the 14 teeth. Let's increase several cycles to see if it matches on every cycle. And so it is. The acceleration envelope is the next step. What what the acceleration envelope does is enveloping all these peaks. That is, it generates a new signal around these peaks, centers it with respect to the zero, and extracts the RMS. Why do we do it this way? Well, because the RMS can be trendable. A train going up in the RMS of the acceleration envelope would mean that the pulses are increasing and thus meaning that these machine gears are more and more damaged because the envelope is rising. Well, basically that's pulse view and acceleration envelope. In pulse view, we generate the pulses. Everything negative become positive, as you can see here. There are no negative values. Then the acceleration envelope is generated. Envelope is centered because otherwise it generates a very low frequency component in the FFT. And after that, the RMS is calculated. Well, that's all for today. See you in the next video.